Secret identity theories in A Song of Ice and Fire are something like noses. Everyone's got one with a few notable exceptions. The Shy Maid is a boat that is traveling throughout uh, Essos in A Dance with Dragons, and we join its crew through Tyrion's eyes early on in that book. This portion of the story was not adopted into uh, A Song of Ice and Fire's television show adaptation, Game of Thrones, but this entire group has a secret mission, which is crowning Aegon the Sixth Targaryen as King of Westeros and marrying him to Daenerys Targaryen, and a Along with that larger secret goal, there are many members of this crew who also have secret identities. We know that Griff is the best character in the series, Lord John Connington. We know that young Griff is the aforementioned Prince Aegon Targaryen. Sir Raleigh Duckfield isn't secret about anything, but many fans have clung on to one particular individual in this crew as they believe that she has some secret identity that is yet to be revealed. Today, I'm going to take a look at this character and figure out exactly who she might be. I'm going to go through three theories as to who she is. Two of them are like just general fandom theories that are not mine originally, but I do have thoughts on. And the third is who I actually think Septa Lamore is, and it's something that I really haven't seen people discuss. So let's dive into Septa Lamore's true identity. As stated, the Shy Maid is rife with secret identities, and Tyrion takes an interest in many of them, most notably Septa Lamore. His interest in her might just be because she keeps changing her clothes in front of him, but she does seem to have some sort of mysterious element about her, and Tyrion goes into that in his thoughts, at least. We hear in his final chapter aboard the ship in A Dance with Dragons what exactly he's thinking about this strange Septa. To quote from Tyrion 6, Even the bravest of your forebears kept his Kingsguard close about him in times of peril. Lamore had changed out of her Septus robes into garb more befitting the wife or daughter of a prosperous merchant. Tyrion watched her closely. He had sniffed out the truth beneath the dyed blue hair of Griff and young Griff easily enough, and Yander and Ysilla seemed to be no more than they claimed to be, whilst Dux was somewhat less. Lamore, though, who was she, really? Why is she here? Not for gold, I'd judge. What is this prince to her? Was she ever a true Septa? So what exactly do we know about Septa Lamor so far? Tyrion observes that she is not in this for gold, which is worth noting. Nobody in Aegon's Little Merry Band seems to be in it for the money. The Golden Company might be, Harry Strickland definitely is, but this core group that Barris and Illyrio have assembled seems to be duty-bound to Aegon through some sort of other loyalty. We know that Griff was in love with Aegon's supposed father, but we don't know the motivations of, say, uh, the Halfmaester or Septa Lamor. Duck is also a bit more simple, as Tyrion says, as he was knighted by Griff and obviously has a lot of loyalty, given that they've made something of him when he was just a commoner before. Despite uh, overall not really knowing a ton about Lamor or her motivations, there are some interesting elements of her uh, just interactions with Tyrion and physical description. She's described as being an older woman. Tyrion puts her around 40, and when she's changing and bathing, as previously mentioned, Tyrion remarks that she has stretch marks on her belly as though she had at some point given birth to a child. She never mentions or references this child at all, and he obviously isn't with her, so there are that is a very interesting element of uh, her identity that many people have latched onto as one element of a theory. Septa Lamore is supposedly a Septa, which is worth noting, but we have no idea if she actually was at any point or not. Tyrion remarks on this as well, especially given the fact that we don't even know if Halden Halfmaester is a maester or not at all. It seemed, my guess would be that he trained at the Citadel some, but didn't fully get his chain, and that's why he's half maester. but who knows, maybe he's like the son of a maester or something. In terms of Lamore, we have no evidence as to whether or not she's actually a Septa, though she does seem to truly believe and want to espouse the values of the Faith of the Seven to Aegon in order to allow him to rule this continent more aptly and ably. Question for you, what do you think is Septa Lamor's true identity? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear your opinions, and if you subscribe, I might tell you my secret identity, and like the video, I think. That's, that's plugging, I'm good at plugging. We are moving now into the theory zone. As discussed earlier, there are three potential identities that I think are uh, worth discussing for Septa Lamore. One is worth discussing because I want to rebut it. It's something that many people seem to think, and I do not think it is the case whatsoever. The other two I could see as somewhat viable options. The first of them is an idea that I've heard time and again, but I don't 100% believe. The second was an idea I had when rereading the first book in the series recently. 
The first of these hidden identities, and the one that's discussed the most, is Ashara Dane. I did a video on Ashara Dane months ago at this point, and I do touch on her being Septa Lamour a little there, but I do want to further rebut this theory here. People think that uh, Septa Lamour might be Ashara Dane because Ashara Dane vanished mysteriously and supposedly gave birth to a stillborn daughter, but overall, I think that the evidence for Septa Lamour being Ashara Dane is very, very flimsy. I think that while some elements elements of uh, the description of Septa Lamour match that of Ashara Dane, there are too many discrepancies to really be able to say definitively that she is. Most notably that Ashara was noted to be incredibly beautiful. T. Reed remarks on Septa Lamour as handsome, and he seems to think that she's hot, but he's not remarking on her as like a striking beauty by any means. You can credit that with age, but the main physical attribute that is missing is her striking purple eyes. We've seen the issue of eye color come up with like young Griff and Griff, uh, but their eye color is altered because their hair is dyed and it looks different. It turns the purple of young Griff's eyes kind of a deeper blue, uh, but Septa Lamour's hair is the same color as Ashardane's, so... I don't know, that just doesn't seem like it adds up to me. Additionally, the only kind of evidence of Ashara maybe being alive was at one point at a con in 1999, Martin is credited as saying, by a fan, not directly reported or recorded by any means, uh, the uh, idea of Ashara Dane's body was never found. So I just think that's very vague, and I don't think that's going to be the case. The second theory I like a bit more, and does offer a bit more of a concrete connection to the main series as it's already happening, and could offer Aegon some support in Dorne, strangely. One of the Sand Snakes, Tyene Sand, is said to be the daughter of a Septa during one of Oberyn's many travels throughout the world. We know that he was in Old Town for a while, and we do know he was in Essos for a while. So in terms of being in the same location as Lamor, it would very much track. Additionally, we do know that Lamor has these stretch marks that indicate that she birthed a child at some point. The main point against this idea is Tyene's physical appearance in itself. She's described as being very fair-skinned and very blonde, which is different than both Oberyn and Lamor. Given the fact that the seed is strong is such a big point in the first book, it does seem strange to have someone whose phenotype does not match either her mother or her father to any degree, though maybe, I don't know, Lamor hooked up with some blonde guy instead of Oberyn. But overall, I like this idea, and it could be interesting to see. I think it's an option that Martin could very much choose to take, but I don't think it's like set in stone as the definitive answer to this conundrum. I'm now going to read you a passage from Daenerys Targaryen's first chapter in the entire series, when she's sort of expositing a little bit about her backstory and reflecting on her past and how she got to the location where she currently is. She's thinking about the fleeing of Westeros uh, by the Targaryens just after Robert's Rebellion. To quote from Daenerys 1, She did not remember Dragonstone either. They had run again, just before the usurper's brother, Stannis Shadout, set sail with his new built fleet. By then, only Dragonstone itself, the ancient seat of their house, had remained of the seven kingdoms that had once been theirs. It would not remain for long. The garrison had been prepared to sell them to the usurper, but one night, Sir Willem Derry and four loyal men had broken into the nursery and stolen them both, along with her wet nurse, and set sail under the cover of darkness for the safety of the Bravosian coast. That's a really well-written passage. By now, I think you see what I'm saying. We know that Daenerys had a wet nurse that was brought over from Dragonstone with her when she and her brother fled the Seven Kingdoms. This wet nurse have no, has no physical description, but it is worth noting that she is involved in all of these conspiracies around the Targaryens. We know that Daenerys and Viserys are very much wrapped up in the plots of Illyrio. It's unclear if Illyrio ever wants them to become the true rulers of the Seven Kingdoms, but we knew that they are the individuals that he is still protecting during this era. He's shuffling them around from manse to manse to ensure that no one is going to keep track of them, and it could be said that this individual, this wet nurse, after she's done serving Daenerys in that way, could have been plucked from there and then trained as a Septa to hopefully someday tutor Aegon VI Targaryen in the faith of the Seven Kingdoms. The main point of connection there, obviously, is that in being a wet nurse, it is supposed that this individual did at one point give birth to a child and would have the stretch marks associated with Septa to Lamore and her potential true identity. It's also the main element that sticks out to me is the fact that Illyrio is such a big focus in this first Daenerys chapter. It takes place at his manse, as does Tyrion's first chapter in A Dance with Dragons, and a lot of this plot revolving around Aegon, Lamore, Connington, 
all of these people is directly tied into Illyrio, the fat man's plan, as the Golden Company refers to it. So I think it's a pretty interesting connection there, and I think that it is possible, and I think it would be interesting to see the two of them interact if Daenerys were to encounter her old wet nurse. Not that she'd remember it, but I think Lamore likely would. Overall, I think either of the last two theories could be true. I think that Lamore is a pretty interesting character, and she is unique as far as individuals in Aegon's camp go. Holden is kind of just a pragmatist. Connington and Duckfield are just kind of rushing to the finish line, trying to get anything done as soon as possible, and Aegon seems to be a teenager and following that lead. Lamore is more of a moderating presence, and I'm very excited to see what exactly she brings to the Winds of Winter, regardless of what her true identity is, as whatever that identity is, it will will lead to a number of interesting interactions either with Dorn or Daenerys or potentially other individuals if she's someone that I haven't listed here. What do you think is Lamore's secret identity? I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments below. While you're down there, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it, and it really helps you grow the channel. I have many more videos on A Song of Ice and Fire coming out in the near future, and I look forward to sharing all of them with you, especially with Duncan Egg coming up soon, which I'm now very excited for, and it has the dragons over. So yeah, thank you again for watching, and I will see you all in the near future. Goodbye, everyone.